Hi guys, this is the extended screencast, I suppose, of what we discussed in lesson of Chaladori's multi-dimensional model of leadership. And I'm just putting this one on because it's a quite a complex model and I thought it might help some people to understand it a little better and to go over it a few times. All right, so as we know, there are three main theories for leadership theory, but this multi-dimensional model of leadership comes in that strand. So if we're talking about analysing leadership theory, you will have to remember to put this model in if it's a 20 mark essay or contain it within leadership theory somewhere. Now, this is the model as a whole and when you see it as a whole like this for the first time, it does shock you a little bit because there's a lot going on. So what I'm intending to do is to go through it step by step and hopefully explain with examples where I can. So if we start at the top left and all the three down the left hand side are what we call characteristics affecting the leader's behaviour or antecedents. And if we look at the top left it says situational characteristics. Situational characteristics are environmental conditions so what is happening in this situation? What is the situation you're in? It could be the type of activity you're doing. All right, this week we're doing some football. Next week, though, we're doing rock climbing. There's a different situation there. How many numbers are in your group? This week I've got three kids. Next week I've got 65 and we're going up Beachy Head. That's a different situation. Could be also be the time constraints of a match. All right, one match could last 90 minutes, next match could last 90 minutes plus extra time. And you also have to consider the strength of the opposition within the situation. All right, next week we're playing a very difficult team, this week an easy team, different situations. If we go down that column, and the next one down says leader characteristics. Now leader characteristics include the skill and the experience of the leader, what are those characteristics? Have they a lot of experience? Have they a lot of skill? Or are they novices? It also includes the personality of the leader and the sort of style that they might lead with. So it could be, we've talked about these before, but the leader might prefer to use an autocratic style. That might be one of their characteristics. Okay? that preference for a style, not actually choosing the style, but the preference for a style. If we go a little bit lower on that column, the final one says member characteristics. That is, what does your group look like? What are they, the different personalities involved? Now that relates to other things such as how old are your group? Have you, are you working with a group of the elderly? Or are you working with a group of toddlers? Is it an all-female group? Is it an all-male group? So we're talking about gender. Are they very motivated? Are some motivated? Are others not bothered? That's quite important about characteristics. How competent are they? How good are they at that activity? Have they some experience in that? All right. So those characteristics will also influence behaviours of the leader. Now if we look along the second column, if we move right a little bit, and this second column down is talking about the type of leader behaviour. So what is the leader going to use? So the top it says required behaviour. That is the required behaviour means what is actually needed in terms of a leadership style for this purpose. The second one down says actual behaviour. That is what does that leader actually choose to do? The third one down at the bottom of that column says preferred behaviour. What do the members of that group prefer that leader to lead like? Do they prefer a particular style? So what is the preferred behaviour for that leader? Now if you draw back and look at the model again, and we go back to the top of required behaviour, the required behaviour, if you look at the yellow arrow, is linked to the situational characteristics. For example, the situation could be that you're walking along the side of Beachy Head. The required behaviour there might be that I use 
autocratic style to keep control of the group because it's quite dangerous. That is what's required. Okay, so that's how situations impact on required behaviour. If we're looking at required behaviour again, you'll also notice that the member characteristics arrow links to required behaviour too. So it could be the members in your group aren't very disciplined, they muck about a lot. That means the required behaviour to look after those people would be a more disciplinarian, autocratic style. But it could also be that the members in your group are quite sociable and they like talking to each other and the required behaviour there might be you need some democratic approach. So that's how the situational characteristics and the member characteristics can influence the required behaviour and therefore following that green arrow down from required behaviour that then impacts on what choice a leader can make in terms of his actual behaviour or her actual behaviour. If we go down that column again to preferred behaviour again you'll see the arrows link to situational and, mem and uh, member characteristics. So if we're talking about preferred behaviour First of all, it's dependent on the situational characteristics. What situation am I in? Could be I'm in a situation where we're down 5 nil in a game. The preferred behaviour might be that we go for that game. We, we choose an attacking approach, right, a different strategy. So we choose a leadership style that will drive my players on. I become a little bit autocratic. I want to tell people what to do. We need to get the job done. That's preferred behaviour. The member characteristics has a bigger influence in preferred behaviour, arguably, because the members might prefer a certain style. Again, going back to that notion of if you've got a very social group, they might prefer you to use a democratic style because they like communicating. They wouldn't prefer if you went in there guns blazing, told them off for talking, etc. etc. It doesn't work out. So the situation and the member characteristics influence the preferred behaviour. And again, that preferred behaviour influences the actual behaviour, what you choose to do as a leader. If you notice in the middle, the actual behaviour is also linked to leader characteristics. And that is because if a leader has, is a novice or doesn't have very much of experience, that can influence his actual behaviour. It limits the choice. If I've only got, as a leader, I've only ever practised autocratic style, my actual behaviour is nine times out of ten is going to be autocratic style because I haven't got any experience of anything else. However, if I'm not a novice leader, my leader characteristics are that I'm experienced, my actual behaviour could be a little bit wider range. I can make a decision based on the situational characteristics, the required behaviour, the member characteristics and the preferred behaviour and make a choice. Now ultimately what this model states is that whatever behaviour you choose as a leader to do, what style you use, or how you act, your actual behaviour influences the group performance, how well they do at a task, or and the group satisfaction, how much they enjoy what they're doing. Now it could be in some cases that you heavily influence the group performance but actually they don't enjoy it very much. Generally speaking, that happens when you, you adopt the required behaviour more than the preferred behaviour. Okay, So if you go with, well, I've got to keep those kids safe. I don't give them monkeys if they prefer a democratic style. I've got to use that autocratic style. Performance will go up, but they might not enjoy it. The other flip side to that is your actual behaviour choice might influence group satisfaction more than group performance so they might enjoy themselves more than they actually perform well and that happens when you choose to take the preferred behavior rather than the required behavior so it could be you have a really nice social group um, however they are on the edge of beachy, beachy head or very close to it and you think my actual behavior is going to be well I'm going to be democratic here and let them do what they wish they might enjoy it, they might not fall over the edge, and they might enjoy it, might have a good experience, but in actual fact the group performance in terms of safety orientation is not that good. 
To get the perfect performance of group performance and group satisfaction, your actual behaviour will match the required behaviour and the preferred behaviour of the group. So there are three ways you can view that model. All right, once again, go over that very slowly, pause as much as you need to, take it in a bit, and make sure you understand that model. If you have any questions, come and see me with it, and I'll help you as much as I possibly can.